back at it again with the new vans. So we are here at Marshall Pass. Today, gonna be continuing our segment, hiking of the Colorado Trail. Gonna be knocking out segments 16 and 17 in this video. For a full trail guide of Colorado Trail segments 16 and 17, you can check the link in the description below. Behind me, we have beautiful Mount Ure, and we are just above the lower Marshall Pass trailhead, which has bathrooms. If you just continue up a bit here, you'll see the upper trailhead. There's a couple of spots to park. And then where Jackie and Tuna are here is where the official start of six, uh, segment 16 begins. We are here on a Friday afternoon, early June, and uh, to give you an idea of the total mileage, so it should be about 35.6, probably over that because we're gonna go up to Baldy Lake. We'll talk about water sources throughout this video, but these segments are very, very scarce with them. So our plan on the second night is to camp up at Baldy Lake, which will obviously be a good source of water. There's about 5,000 feet of elevation gain on these two segments. So segment 16 is about 15 miles. Segment 17 is about 20 miles. 16 here will be the bigger climbing one, where 17 will be pretty much all downhill. You actually lose about 4,800 feet of elevation along the way. First trail junction, not in the book, but pretty obvious that you're gonna wanna go up this way. Loads and loads of fallen trees uh, after the 2021 winter. I'm sure some of these will be cleared up, but probably not all of them. So expect some uh, diversions here. Right about 2.5 miles in, you're gonna reach this Jeep road here. You're just gonna to wanna to continue on it for a bit. This is our campsite view. We're gonna hike about another mile or so, but we can't turn down these views. So this will be where we're gonna set up camp for the night. With this beautiful backdrop and woke up to a nice sunrise this morning. Today, we're gonna to be continuing segment 16 of the Colorado Trail. So uh, we're definitely gonna finish the segment today and probably get six miles into the next segment. So we're aiming for about an 18 mile day to camp at Baldy Lake. As I mentioned yesterday, water sources on this uh, segment 16 here are scarce. So there's one at mile 4.1, but you have to hike 0.4 miles or 0.3 miles off the trail each way to get to it. There's another pretty good one at 11.7, but that's the last one on this segment. So you have about four miles plus another eight or so to Baldy Lake. Segment 17 is uh, drier than 16. For more information, as always, uh, for a full trail guide and water sources, camping, tips, etc. For both of these segments, you can check the full trail guide in the links in the description. This is the Silver Creek Trail here, right at mile about 3.7 for us. The book says 4.1. By the way, when I say the book, I'm linking uh, the books I use, we use for this uh, Colorado Trail in the description below, but it's basically the Colorado Trail mini guidebook here. So anytime I say book, that's what I'm talking about. This is a little bit ahead, of, under schedule, I guess. It's supposed to be at 4.1. So if you did need to pump, you can head down this trail right here and it's about 0.3 miles or so and then about 200 feet off the trail down funny and ironic of course that these segments were supposed to be like the most dry on the trail super conscious about water we're just cruising through mud right now and if our life depended on it this water is running so you could find somewhere to drink it I'm sure it's all snow melt so you'd probably die without an antibiotic but 
I mean, look at how deep these puddles are. Definitely different views than the Collegian Peaks West, but equally as pretty. It's been kind of working through this foresty area for a while now. It's nice because it's blocking the sun, but the bugs in here are awful. If you stop for like two seconds, you get coated with them which is kind of surprising. There's not really water nearby, so it must be just breeding in the snow or something. I'm not sure, or the puddles maybe from the snow, but yeah, they're pretty bad. So I'm just trying to keep it moving here so we don't get eaten alive. These are the segments that really test your love and commitment to this whole process and backpacking. There is just nothing going on on this segment. Just walking through the woods like this for the last five miles, pretty much since we camped. And yeah, it's just boring. Really, really boring. Finally opened up a bit and you can see your progress, which is depressingly not that far. You started basically at the bottom, uh, base of Mount Ure over there. And then, yeah, you can see uh, Mount Etna back there as well. When humans take a rest, they sit like normal people. When Juno takes a rest, this is how she exercises her resting time. Yep, right there. Perfect spot. We are at 11.6. Juno is basking in all this nice cold water's glory. This is the last reliable water source on this segment. And as you can see, it's pretty good here. So we're gonna stop and pump and take a little break. Spent some time just soaking our feet. Juno was swimming like I showed you and pumped water. So yeah, from here, you basically have about three and a half-ish, four miles of a pretty constant uphill to finish segment 16 here of the Colorado Trail. Just been working through this big open field here segment four vibes for sure but uh, about to cross this forest road and uh, that's about a 13 mile marker which means we have just over two left there is a cool i don't know if cool is the right adjective but there's a memorial at the end we're going to check out um, so that's going to add another quarter third of a mile but i'll show you that once we get there Another example of the Colorado Trail doing its damn thing. We went all the way around this field just to literally come right here. We could have just went straight across. I really think there's some kind of mileage record trying to be set with this trail. And I understand, don't hurt me. I know most of this trail is linked together by old trails. I get that. It's a joke, okay? At mile 14.7, you're gonna reach this final trail junction of the last of segment 16 here. It's pretty obvious you don't wanna go this way because you're already facing up, but that's where you're gonna go. Well, the segment started off a little monotonous, but boy, is it ending very beautiful up here. So pretty. Okay, right before the end of the segment, there's this metal stock tank right there and the uh, memorial 
for the fallen soldiers is in the trees over here. This is Soldier Stone, the uh, quarter mile detour, so pretty wild. This is just in the middle of nowhere. Definitely worth the little excursion. Highly recommend checking out that memorial. Sangres, you got the sand dunes right there. Windy, but beautiful. So this is the uh, official end of segment 16. There's not really much going on. Basically, you're gonna cross this Jeep road and it starts 17 right there. I thought this segment was pretty good, but I'll ask Jackie what she thought because everyone likes to hear from her, so. What'd you think, Jack? Um, the first half was kind of boring, but once you got up and it opened up, it was really nice. And I think it helped. It was really hot out today, too. There was a nice breeze once we got up a little bit higher. Yeah. I feel like if you hit this early in the season, water sources are really not a problem. Uh, there's water everywhere. But yeah, later in the year, stuff will dry out. That's 16 in the books. We're going to keep this video going for part two of video segment 17. But per tradition here, we're going to do our little celebratory number. What is this? I do one. Segment 16 in the books. I haven't really addressed this, but the reason why we're doing 16 and 17 be together is because it's just way easier for us. We don't have two 4x4 four four cars. I'm sure you could make it work to just do uh, 16 here, but for me, probably not worth it. You can see segment 17 kind of starts right here. So as I said at the beginning of the video, segment 17 here, uh, just about 20.4 miles and 2300 feet of elevation gain the majority of your hiking on this segment is downhill you would start at like we're 11 6 right now you end up at like nine something so there are definitely some hills along the way as you can obviously figure out by the 2300 feet of elevation gain but you lose like 4800 so it's very much a slow roller decline kind of segment water is also really tough on this so we are going to be camping hopefully tonight at baldy lake which is about a mile detour and it's at mile seven here of the segment and it's uh should be a pretty good place to camp and obviously pump it's about 2.5 miles into segment 17 here of the colorado trail yeah it's been really boring that's why i've been showing you much it's just a lot of forest hiking very very similar to the start of 16 after you left Marshall Pass area. You know that feeling when you get bit by one mosquito and you just feel like your whole body's covered with them? That's what's been going on with me for the past two hours or so and I'm a genius and forgot bug spray because usually you don't need it except for this time of year when you definitely do. Yeah morale is low this segment is god awful boring so far. We're on the subject of gear and forgotten gear, you can check all the virtual Sherpa gear I have in my store, which is linked in the description below the video. And then I also have everything Jackie Juno and I are using today and on all of our Colorado Trail hiking segments. So if you want to see what gear we have, you can check that out as well. Wow, the mosquitoes on this segment segment 17 here are no joke like literally if i stop moving my legs and arms will be coated with them in less than 10 seconds it's nuts this segment here is turning into a real suffer fest spirits at least for me i don't even know where jackie is she's behind me we've kind of given each other space so we don't take out the environmental circumstances on each other but holy hell this is a suffer fest. Highly, highly do not recommend this in June. Four way intersection here. You're gonna wanna keep going straight. We're going down to Baldy Lake so we can kill ourselves, probably drown ourselves in the lake. I think collectively that'd probably be the best way to go. Um, hopefully taking as many mosquitoes with us as possible. But anyway, it's a half mile down here and this is really your last solid water segment, water choice year round. There is another point at 11.7, .7, so another four-ish, five-ish from here. But we just do not have 25 miles in our legs today. Closer look at the lake here. Crystal smooth waters. Nice little backdrop as well. Hard to tell, but we just got our tent set up right over there. 
We are going to pass out so hard. We'll see you in the morning. A beautiful night spent here under the stars. Nice, cool temperatures. And we both slept really good because we were just, all three of us slept really good because we were just so tired. So today we have uh, just about 13 and a half miles to go to the end of segment 17 here of the Colorado Trail. And yeah, just going to sit here and enjoy the views from the lake a bit before we get started on the hike. This is the point of the hike where Juno has decided she is done waiting for anybody. So she's just on her own leash here. I always said Juno's related to the fox. There's one right up there sharing the trail with her. Probably eating his breakfast. So cool. Like much, but we are passing the high point of segment 17 here. It's about 11.8. It looks like after this it might open up a bit, which honestly, would be amazing. Second fox of the morning. Juno's very interested. This is pretty much the summit of Middle Baldy here. No views, but it is very nice up here right now. If you had like a 300 foot ladder, you could see the San Juans to your left. I know I've been overly negative on this segment video probably as a whole. It's just been a lot of type two stuff, but look at these views here. Absolutely gorgeous and really a preview of what's to come in the last uh, 10 or 11 segments. Over the course of the last three days, we've seen a ton of people coming north and wasn't really sure what was happening. It seems a little bit early to start the Colorado Trail for most people and it makes way more sense. Almost all of them are through hiking the Continental Divide Trail, starting in Mexico, going up to Canada. And if there's a quick way to feel emasculated, it's when you're tired doing 35 miles and they're doing 3,500 miles and just cruising by you. But best of luck to all of them, that's pretty impressive. As I said earlier in the video, segment 17 here of the Colorado Trail is a lot of downhill. So we are just about mile 13, so seven miles or so from the end. And just kind of going, going through some rollers. There's two more bigger climbs, um, but the mosquitoes have gone for now which is great, but the heat has picked up significantly. This is very, very hot. The little shade that I just walked through, pockets like that are amazing right now. So yeah, if you're hitting this one later in the summer, definitely want to plan your miles accordingly because this is just going to be really rough with uh, high heat, which this area of the state can get pretty easily. Side of those couple of meadows I showed you earlier on the segment, it's been very monotonous. This is segment 10, segment four, three kind of vibes, just very boring, very monotonous, and not much to see. Sometimes Mother Nature just gives you exactly what you need. Oh, this feels so good. So much for no snow up here too. <laughs> Doesn't look like much on film, but you are staring up at the last climb of segment 17 here of the Colorado Trail. I'm doing okay, but morale and the rest of the group is pretty, pretty low. So we will be very happy to get this climb over. Once you're at the top of this climb, there's a couple more intersections. If there's anything that's not super well marked, I'll show you. And then you basically have a two and a half to three mile descent. And most of it's on a uh, forest road back to uh, Highway 140, which is where the segment ends. Oh, 
man, that was by far the toughest climb of both of these segments. Absolutely brutal. The heat is tough. And I feel for Jackie right now. She's probably cursing me out. It's her turn with a dog. And uh, I'm sure that's not fun. So yeah, multiply that footage I showed you by about seven, and that's the hill we just went up. What'd you think of that hill, Jack? She's not doing good. Woo, look at these pretty irises. Kind of dying just like us. All right, we are on the last big juncture of the day. This is a forest road here, and you're basically gonna follow this all the way out to Colorado Highway 114. You have just over two miles on this, and then you're done with segment 17 of the Colorado Trail. Jackie, <laughs> thoughts on this segment? All I'm thinking about is a milkshake right now. This has been hot buggy and I don't know if this is a word but unscenic not scenic I agree we complained a lot specifically I complained a lot in the video but as any adventure in the mountains is it's a lot of type 2 fun Juno is finding pockets of shade yeah we're all pretty spent the water situation on 17 was much 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 more difficult than 16 there was just really nothing besides Baldy Lake, which we stopped at. There was a creek at a mile 10.4, I think it was like Razorback or something, that was running really well. But it was like a tweener spot for us where we didn't really need water. We should have filled up there, live and learn. We forgot hiking poles to this trip, which made it very difficult. And uh, overall, yeah, there was just a lot of struggle on this, but it all adds to the memory and the accomplishment when it's done. If you do not want to walk these two miles down this lovely forest road here, most cars can drive up to that point up there where we came down uh, out of the trail and joined the road. I just did not know that. Of course, that only applies for segment hikers. There's no, I mean, obviously if you're through hiking, you don't have a car. It's just way too much for Juno. We've literally been dragging her for the last two miles and it's just so fucking hot. So Jackie is gonna stay back and stay with Juno in the shade. I'm gonna go get the car and pick them up. If you're gonna bring dogs, you just need a ton of water. Juno today has drank more water than both of us combined. And that has never happened before. She usually is like, she'll touch it a little bit and then, you know, just ignore the bowl. Today, every time we give her water, she's just sopping it up. Yeah, I mean, personally, if I was gonna do this again, I would leave Juno at home for this segment. It is, it is brutal. It's brutal. I mean, there's no easy way of, of putting it. That's been weighing down on both of us a lot because, you know, obviously, we don't give a crap about the Colorado Trail. We care about our dog and making sure she's healthy. So, unfortunately, that's how this segment's gonna end. And that's how I'm gonna wrap up both of these segments, 16 and 17, of the Colorado Trail here. Uh, yeah, it's just part of being out in nature, being a responsible human being, and being a dog owner. You gotta just sacrifice things sometimes. And for us today, it was sacrificing all of our water for Juno, and Jackie sacrificing the end of this segment. On that very upbeat note, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. If you're new to my channel, I do virtual trail guides. We do virtual trail guides of the whole Colorado Trail. So check that playlist out. Colorado hiking and much, much more. Check the channel out, check the website out, virtualsherpa.com. As always, there's a full guide, A to Z, everything you need to know about these segments linked in the description of the hike below. Thank you very much for watching, putting up for my negative attitude in this video, and we'll see you on the next adventure.